Hello guys, today I'm working on this very beautiful flash drive <laughs> that is made out of scrap metal, is what I would call it. Uh, this thing here you guys see, this is a SanDisk, most likely, monolithic uh, SD card. It's repurposed as a NAND uh, component running off of this uh, Alcor AU6989 controller. There are a bunch of things that could be happening here. Uh, the device came in like this um, with the jumpers just because this uh, didn't pass um, quality control there's a good chance that the memory is the source of the problem itself so if we even had a donor which we do client sent the donor along with it even if we had a donor for this there is no guarantee that it's going to take care of it uh, this will work if the problem with the memory is in on the connection level you know if the connection isn't all there then uh, maybe we can get lucky and uh, uh, by re reworking the device even to an original board we should bring its functionality back but the donor would be very helpful in this case if uh, let's say the original controller that Alcor controller uh, stopped working or something else on the circuit level component level isn't doing its job and if that's the case having a substitution that is functional that is built on the same platform that runs the same way uh, would be great I'm not gonna use this connector I don't know where it came from I don't know what it's um, how good it is or how bad it is I'm gonna just go ahead and take this off first let's turn on the fume extraction This is just troubleshooting, this is not intent to repair, I just want to make sure that I get to see what the device does when it's connected with a known working component. So the first tool to do any type of work with a USB is this guy right here, just the simplest uh, amp meter, plug this in and I uh, have uh, um, an extension cord for USB hooked up to my uh, power supply DC power supply unit and this will tell us what kind of consumption we're getting when the device is powered on we're getting 30 milliamps that's uh, adequate for the device of this type let's turn it off we know that it's not going crazy on the amps so now it's actually safe to plug it into something that is of higher value <laughs> In this case, I'm gonna use a uh, good old deep spar USB stabilizer. Slide this in, power up, set to the SSD. Okay, so now we wait. Um, we see the device doesn't wanna initialize. Since we have a donor, we can uh, take the NAND from the donor, swap it onto our patient to see if patient is gonna work with the donor's NAND. If it does, then we know for sure that the board is good we know for sure that the controller is good and we know for sure that the memory is bad uh, there's nothing else really that will boil it up uh, if it works then uh, it, there is uh, probably no point in swapping the memory from um, patient onto the donor unless uh, we feel that connection between the patient and uh, patient's um, memory and patient's board it wasn't good in the, in the first place uh, add a bit of flux so while the ink is drying this is the donor device that we have looks the same probably came out of the same pack or same place uh, let's uh, just double check that it's not gonna fry anything important 
so connect it to uh, the amp meter check the readings on that it's consuming 40 milliamps so a little bit more but if we go into uh, the deep spar control panel and power this thing up we should get capacity showing up if the device is working at this point let's just turn it off um, we see that it's working which is awesome yeah once heated this is this glue comes off much easier I guess let's take the memory off here This thing is not being held on to by a lot. We just gotta series of connections. And as I mentioned before, this is a SanDisk SD card. So if we needed to recover content uh, directly from the NAND, we would go through these connections here we can't plug this thing into the card reader and assume it's gonna give us the data because uh, remember that this is now doesn't have an internal controller that's functional that's functioning it's using the NAND protocol okay these dots here uh, they're just for leveling you see because if they were connected to the circuit and activated with the controller somehow they these connections talk to the controller on the SD card and what this manufacturer wanted to do is it wanted to skip this portion use this controller to talk to the uh, specific signals on the card these are the bus signals and these are the command signals here and uh, the reason why we have solder leftovers here is just because these bumps were created to level the card so when you melt it it doesn't sit on the angle it has something kind of propping prep, propping the uh, the card to sit leveled with uh, the distance that's going to be created by these uh, solder spheres okay so I took the patient off and I put it onto our patient the donor memory on a patient board so what do we have on the output we have 50 and it drops to 30 so this is a donor on a patient board now we're going to connect it to uh, deep spar and power on deep spar with donor's memory and it mo mounts uh, if it mounts you guys know i explained before i'm go even going to open up a new window if it mounts that means the board and the controller of the patient are good and we can see that our device is appearing here and uh, if we scroll we can see that it's got data on it and that uh, could be extracted what do we know to this point we know that our board was good we know that our board didn't have any issues and it's currently working with the uh, another device so just for eliminating easy options we can mount uh, the um, uh, patient's memory onto uh, this device here but let's just make sure that we to take an extra care with it add a bit more flux and uh, redo the soldering joints on there
and we're just gonna put all new balls here. Same goes for the um, balancing ones. Alright, it's gonna be tough to miss uh, the placement, like the pads are really big on there. Yeah, this paint is horrible. Well, oh. not gonna use it anymore. So let's plug this in again to the metering device. Readings are good. Plug this into the box and let's hit the power switch here. And what do you know? It seems to like it. It actually seemed to like it. Um, maybe it was a bad connection. Who knows? Let's find out if we can actually take the data off of it. And as you can see, some activity is taking place. We got store and go. Now it's actually properly, properly named. And if we go into the hex, I'm pleasantly surprised it's giving us the data so at this point the device is gonna go and get cloned and once the clone is created uh, the data will be extracted this is a successful case I'm happy it worked out if you guys have a <laughs> device similar to this that doesn't work feel free to reach out to us for help link in the description will take you to our website where you can request those services for those of you who are new to the channel if you're into data recovery subscribe because that's all we post here data recovery cases day in day out now we get a chance to post a new video we do that so thank you guys for watching again and i'll see you all in the next episode